Well, welcome back to our journey through Ozarks history. Um, we have been looking for the last weeks at the uh, land and the water of the Ozarks. And today we're going to kind of take a little bit of a tour. We're going to just kind of, I'm going to show you some of the different regions of the Ozarks. And then, as I was telling Rachel, next week I'll be off. Uh, it's the 4th of July on Monday. So I'm going to take the day off and uh, I'm going to let you guys have a day of rest and maybe get out with your families and celebrate you know, our wonderful country. And then we're going to come back and we're going to do about a four week session on the Native <laughs> Americans of the Ozarks. A really an interesting period of time. Uh, just like most of America, long before we got here, there were other people here. And that's what we're going to find out about during the month of July and the first week of August. But today we're going to do a kind of a geographic tour of the Ozarks. Uh, <clears throat> as you know, I've told you that what we're going to do is <clears throat> I'm going to spotlight a famous Ozarker. Now, you probably won't know this lady. In fact, case I would say most people in the Ozarks don't know this lady. She's, uh, she's one of those people that's kind of been lost to history, uh, but she played a really significant role in the Ozark history in the early part of the 20th century. Her name is Elizabeth Mankey. Uh, she was just an extremely important writer. Uh, her biography has been written by a lady by the name of Ellen Gray Massey. It's called A Candle Within Her Soul. She was uh, considered one of the premier poets of the rural America during the 1930s. In fact, the case they had a contest from a national magazine uh, to choose the best rural poet writer. And out of 1,600 entries, she won it. Um, she given the title by the governor of the Poet Lord of the Ozarks. And uh, she just had an extremely long, long career. And uh, she wrote about the Ozarks. Uh, she wrote about her life growing up in Taney County, which is where Branson, Missouri is. Her father was a man by the name of Alonzo Prather, who, uh, by the way, was one of the original ball knobbers. And we're going to talk about that later on when we post war, post Civil War era period. Uh, he was kind of a famous man in his own right. But that's who my famous Ozarker of the day is, Mary Elizabeth Mankey. So, you know, when somebody comes to the Ozarks, uh, they're kind of shocked depending on where you go. If you come to Springfield, which is the largest city in the Ozarks, it's on, you know, I-44, and it's kind of a, the place that a lot of people start their tour of the Ozarks, they're kind of shocked because, number one, uh, it's a metropolitan region of at least a quarter million people, and it's a, you know, a modern uh, industrialized city. It's an educational hub. It's a, it's a health hub, and people are I thought I was going to see log cabins and hillbillies. Uh, I thought I was going to see mountains. And what you find is you find a plain, a very, you know, beautiful, you know, flat plain. So the thing of it is, the Ozarks is not area. It's not an area of just what we imagine it to be if you live outside the Ozarks. And uh, thinking deep hollows and, and hills and mountains and rugged terrain and rivers, all these things we've been talking about, it's actually a very, uh, you know, kind of multifaceted area. In fact, you can almost talk about really more than one kind of Ozarks. Now, we talked this week about the geologic Ozarks. We talked about the different kind of rocks and the formations and how the land got to be the way it was. Uh, so that's one kind of Ozarks. There's a cultural Ozarks. Um, if you would come to Springfield and ask almost anybody in Springfield, where can I see a hillbilly? They would kind of look at you like, I'm afraid you're not going to find a hillbilly in Springfield. Well, you can, trust me. You know? uh, but for the most part, people in Springfield would not consider themselves hillbillies. But I can take you five miles 
and I can take you into land where you can find people that would classify themselves as hillbillies without any doubt at all. So there's a cultural Ozarks that exist. But today, what we're going to look at is the geographic Ozark. There's a lot of different geographic uh, regions within the Ozarks. In fact, a man by the name of Dr. Milton Rafferty, who worked at uh, Missouri State University as a geographer, wrote a book called Land and Life of the Ozarks. And he identified nine geographic regions, distinct regions that are different from each other in geographic ways, cultural ways, uh, geographic ways. So we're going to look at this. We're going to look at these nine regions today. And I'm going to, like I say, I'm going to kind of give you a little visual tour of the Ozarks, as you will. Um, so, and by the way, remember the Ozarks is a really huge place. It's about the size of Ohio, uh, which is a pretty good sized state in its own right. But, you know, you can drive three or four hours in the Ozarks and can just about cover every one of these geographic regions. Uh, it doesn't take a long time to go from one to the other. So what are these nine geographic regions? And then we're going to look at each one individually. Well, there's the Missouri River border region, which obviously borders the Missouri River. The Mississippi River border region, which conversely, you know, borders the Mississippi River. There's what's called the Springfield Plain. That's where I live, is in the Springfield Plain. There's the St. Francis Mountains. Remember, last week we talked about the St. Francis Mountains as being the geologic center of the Ozarks. The fact that they are the only true mountains within the uh, The Cordaway Hills. Now, you probably looked at that when I said that. You probably thought, what? That's the Courtois Hills. Or, Courtois Hills, if you're speaking in French, I'm assuming. But in the Ozarks, they're called the Cordaway Hills. I know, you know, we have a way of uh, really uh, tearing up the French language in the Ozarks. And there's a lot of French named places. There's a little town about five miles from here called Bodark. But if you look at it, it's B O I S space D E space A R C. It doesn't look like Bodark, but that's how we pronounce it. So these are these are the Cordaway Hills, the White River Hills, which is along the the White River, the Branson area, the Osage Gas Hills, which obviously are up around the Osage River, the Lake of the Ozarks region, the Central Plateau, which is sometimes called the Salem Plateau for the larger city in that area, and we'll talk about that, and finally the Boston Mountains which I told you last week, are not really mountains. They're just high hills. Uh, actually, it was a plateau that's been dissected by erosion. But, you know, so these are the nine geographic regions of the Ozarks. Let me show you a map here. A little bit better if you look at a map. Up here is what's called the Missouri River border. This area that borders primarily south of the Missouri River. The Mississippi River border obviously is kind of a narrow strip that, that flows along, uh, you know, the Mississippi River. And then you have the St. Francis Mountains here. Again, the oldest mountains and, uh, and you know, the real genuine mountains of the Ozarks. While down here on the southern border, you have the Boston Mountains. You've got three hill regions. You've got the Corey Hills region which is primarily the current river in the Merrimack River Valley up through here. You've got the Osage Gasconade Hills, which is the Osage River Valley uh, area. And then you've got the White River Hills, which primarily is, goes along what was then the White River. Now is about these six different lakes that we talked about two weeks ago that the Corps of Army Engineers uh, dammed up. Branson is about right here. And finally, you have two kind of flat plains areas. You've got what's called the Central Plateau, which is a pretty high plateau. And it's not always flat. You get down here south of West Plains into this part of Arkansas, and it's pretty mountain. 
and a lot of valleys and a lot of uh, ups and downs. But this up here is fairly decent farmland and uh, sometimes called the sand plateau for this region. And then you've got what's called the Springfield Plain, which is, you know, a lot of people don't even want to include the Springfield Plain in the Ozarks. They say, you don't have any business being in the Ozarks. You're not part of it. Well, we are. But number one, uh, Springfield has always been the largest city of the Ozarks. And uh, so much that happened within the Ozarks culturally emanated out of Springfield. So it's going to be part of the Springfield, of, part of the Ozarks. It may not look like what the Ozarks is going to look like, but it is. And this is the Springfield Plain. It wraps around, includes Joplin, and then swings around through the Bentonville, Rogers, Fayetteville, Springdale, Arkansas uh, area, and kind of between the Boston Mountains and the White River Hills. Uh, this down here is not nearly as good agricultural area. This is by far and away the best agricultural area of the Ozarks in this part up here. So let's look at each one of these rapidly. First of all, the Missouri River border. It's a transitional area between the glacial plains north and the Ozark plateau south. I'm going to show you two really contrasting photos in a minute that will show you exactly what I'm talking about here. The Missouri River border is kind of the southernmost edge of the great glaciers that came south about 20,000 years ago uh, and covered the northern part of Missouri. The river valley is, is pretty narrow. Uh, at times, it's only miles wide. It's an alluvial valley. Uh, like I said, it borders the Missouri River Valley, so obviously it's, you know, it's going to have a lot of good alluvial soil. Uh, to the south, it's going to have really steep bluffs. So that's where you can see the limitations of the glaciers. It was just like they came to a certain distance and then just stopped. Um, the river is constantly changing, by the way. The Missouri River is an extremely dangerous river to be on. Uh, it's really a difficult river to navigate, uh, much more dangerous than the Mississippi River. The Mississippi is a big river. It's wide and it's deep and uh, it changes. It has its problems, but the Missouri River Valley is a really dangerous river to navigate because it's constantly changing, uh, bringing with it all this alluvial soil from the Great Plains. Uh, to the north of the Missouri River Valley, is really great land. I mean, you know, that, that's part of what's called the glaciated plains. And I mean, it's fantastic agricultural land. And uh, it's not surprising that that was some of the earliest parts of Missouri that was settled was along the Missouri and the Mississippi River Valley. Uh, in fact, the case, uh, this was a huge uh, cotton and tobacco growing region in the antebellum South uh, before the Civil War. And uh, the nickname for the Missouri River border region was Little Dixie, you know, because it was that that important as far as tobacco and cotton set uh, growing. So here's a picture. This is called Manitou Bluff. It's around Boonville, Missouri. Now, you're going to be looking west here, okay? This is looking west, and this is the southern edge of the Missouri River. You'll notice just gigantic, steep, almost straight up and down bluff. That was the absolute limit of the glacier. The glacier would have covered, when it came down and covered a lot of the northern part of the United States, uh, it would have, this was its southern limit in this area. And uh, it would have been, you know, it's been estimated as maybe as much as two miles high. So it would have been a huge glacier. And it would have just absolutely flattened everything in its way until it got to its southern limit. That's the bluff. If you look north from the Missouri River, that's what you see. I mean, you know, for all practical purposes, if you could get high enough, you could go clear to Canada and it would just be absolutely flat. If you know anything about, you know, United States geography, Iowa, Minnesota, uh, I mean, just flat land. Uh, it's just, you know, and to the west of that, the plains, 
uh, North and South Dakota, uh, Nebraska, Kansas. I mean, just, I mean, you're talking flat, flat land. And that's what you would see in the northern part of Missouri. Uh, so that would have been the northern uh, part. So that is the Missouri River border. Now, the Mississippi River border is not nearly that dramatic because number one, the glacier didn't get that far south. Uh, it's also a narrow strip of land as I showed you on that map that kind of borders the Mississippi River. Uh, actually, some of the Ozarks geologically uh, exist over in you know the border of Illinois. Now, as I told you before, I can guarantee you go to Illinois and you tell these people, do you know you're part of the Ozarks? And they would absolutely look at you like you were crazy. You know, uh, there's no way they would consider themselves part of the Ozarks. That's what we're talking about when you say the cultural Ozarks. They may geologically belong to the Ozarks, but they're not part of the Ozarks culturally. Uh, there's a really steep escarpment at the Mississippi border. By an escarpment, I mean, again, uh, a really deep decline in the land. Uh, for instance, uh, there's one part there in St. Genevieve County, which is about 100 miles south of St. Louis, where the elevation goes from 1,700 feet above sea level to 460 feet above sea level in a matter of miles. I mean, we're talking really, really a steep decline or incline if you're on, you know, west. I mean, it's just a, it's called an escarpment and it's really a, a rugged area. You're going to find a lot of caves here. You're going to find a lot of sinkholes. Uh, the longest cave in Missouri is Perry Cave, 28 miles long map. And there's parts of it that haven't been mapped. Uh, that exists in the Mississippi River border. There's also an area called Hahn State Park, which is where I think I told you where you could see some of the elements of metamorphic rock. It's the only place in Missouri that you're going to find metamorphic rock in abundance. Uh, the area around the sinkholes and Hahn State Park and the uh, Perry uh, Cave is often referred to as the Barrens. You know, and uh, when uh, Henry Rose Schoolcraft came west in 1818, 1819, winter of 1818, 1819, he wrote about the barrens. He went through it and he talked about how rugged it was. So let's see again some pictures here, okay? Uh, here is a picture of, if you were to go to, uh, you know, Perry County, you're going to find the barrens. And this is a, uh, part of what's known as the Barrens. You can see it's just really pretty rugged land. So that takes us to the Springfield Plain, where I live. Now, again, if you come to the Springfield Plain, you're going to be severely disappointed if you're looking for mountains, if you're looking for hills, if you're looking for valleys. They just don't exist in very much abundance on the Springfield Plain. It's a sloping plain that forms the western border of the Ozarks, as I showed you. Uh, there's not a lot of relief. Uh, it's just, you know, pretty flat. And it's got really good soil here. I say good, that's a, that's a relative term. It's good in comparison to the rest of the Ozarks. Uh, it's not that it's that great, but it's better than you're gonna find in other parts of the Ozarks, for sure. Uh, and, you know, as you might imagine, there's a lot of farmland in this region. Uh, there are isolated hills. They're called bulbs because what happened was, uh, you know, you have these small hills and maybe at the top, uh, they would be, uh, maybe something would happen, there'd be no trees. And there was often a lot of these hills were kind of like a, a ball head of man with the top of the dome bald. There's also a lot of cedar glades in the Springfield Plain. Um, I could take you to a beautiful cedar plate at the Battlefield National uh, Park about two miles from here. And uh, say I could take you to it. I used to be able to take you to it. I'm not sure I could find it anymore, but it's one of my favorite places growing up. We used to take um, our daughter there and have little picnics in that cedar glade. And it was just absolutely gorgeous spot, but they exist in quite abundance. Um, 
This used to be covered in blue stem prairie grass. Uh, most of it has been plowed under now. Uh, you would have you would have thought this part of the Ozarks would have been just an extension of the Great Plains, and you would have been to some degree correct if you would have thought that. There are two prairies that kind of still exist. One of them is called the Wakanta Prairie, which is named after an Osage uh, deity, and it's north of Stockton, and it's a, it's a state preserve. And I'll show you a picture of the Wakanta Prairie. And then there's a, a prairie that's less defined. It's called the Grand Prairie, which is just directly west of Springfield, kind of north of my own hometown of Republic. And uh, it's, it's, again, some of the most beautiful farmland, I think, in this area. Uh, as you drive through that area, it's just got beautiful farms. Um, this was the first region that was the most heavily settled in the Ozarks and still is. Uh, like I told you earlier, Springfield is the largest city of the Ozarks, about the metro area, uh, about a quarter of a million. And I'm saying metro area cities like Republic and Ozark and Nixa and Willard and Marshfield, some of these surrounding communities, Rogersville, um, they kind of make up the metro Springfield area. Um, I can remember my dad when I was growing up in Republic, it was about 10 miles from Springfield. And he used to tell me, he said, son, someday you're not going to know when you leave Republic and enter Springfield. And guess what? The city limit signs back up against each other today. So he was right. Uh, the second most settled area in the Ozarks is also in the Springfield Plain. That's the Bentonville, Springdale, Fayetteville, Rogers, Arkansas corridor. And again, this is a, a very important region. Uh, a lot of people don't realize this is one of the most fastest growing regions in North America. It also has a lot of wealth. Uh, if you're familiar with this region, you know that that's the home to Walmart. Yeah. Uh, it's also home to Tyson chicken production, which is the largest chicken producer, I believe, in the United States. It's got a lot of wealth in the Bentonville, Springfield, Fayetteville, Rogers, Arkansas corridor. So, you know, that's the Springfield Plain. Let me show you a couple of pictures. Uh, well, no, I'm sorry. I want to read you Schoolcraft's uh, description of the Springfield Plains. Remember Henry Rowe Schoolcraft, this guy that first explored the Ozarks in 1818, 1819. He came west, and on January the 4th, uh, he came up out of the James River Valley, right east of Springfield. And he came upon what's known as the Springfield Plain, and he was just flabbergasted because he had been traveling for so many days in just hills and valleys and forests. And when he came up on the Springfield Plain, he was just, he was kind of blown away. So let me read you this. It began snowing a little after midnight and continued until daybreak. The prairies, which commence at the distance of a mile west of this river, and he's talking about the James River, are the most extensive, rich, and beautiful of any which I've ever seen west of the Mississippi River. Now, that's a little hyperbole. He obviously never made it to Kansas and Nebraska. They are covered by a coarse wild grass which attains so great a height that it completely hides a man on horseback riding through it. The deer and elk abound in this quarter, and buffalo is occasionally seen in droves along the prairies. You don't see any buffalo here anymore. You don't see any elk. You still see a lot of deer. Along the margin of the river and to a width of one to two miles each way is found a vigorous growth of trees, some of which almost are incredible size. The lands consist of a rich black alluvial soil, apparently deep and calculated for corn, flax, and hemp. These were common you know, uh, crops of this era. The river banks are skirted with cane to the exclusion of all other underbrush and the lands rise gently from the river for a mile, terminating in highlands without bluffs with a handsome growth of hickory and oak and a soil which is probably adapted for wheat, rye, oats, and potatoes. He was very impressed with the Springfield Plain. It's not surprising, as I said, that this was the area that was the most heavily populated almost immediately when people started coming into the Ozarks. So 
Here's the Wauquatawa Prairie. If you were to go up north of Stockton, it's like a state park. It's a state prairie, and uh, they have uh, tried to preserve it as much as possible. This is, of course, a purple corn cornflower, um, which is one of the many wildflowers you can find in the Ozarks. There's a lot more, but this was a, a field of purple cornflowers. Coneflowers, pardon me. This is Pond Creek, west of Republic, north of Republic. This is obviously an aerial view. And you can see just beautiful farmland. Uh, you know, you won't find this in a lot of other parts of the Ozarks. Uh, to some degree, that central plateau up around the Salem area, you'll find this good of farmland. But that's pretty unusual to find that good of farmland uh, west uh, of Springfield. So it's a, it's a beautiful area. Now, the St. Francis Mountains, we talked a little lot about the St. Francis Mountains uh, last week. We talked about the geologic center of the Ozarks. And again, the fact that they are the only true mountains because they're volcanic. Uh, they're made up of granite. And although they're not very tall, that's because they've been exposed over the millions of years to weathering and erosion. These mountains were a lot, lot bigger when they were first developed. Uh, I told you last week, there are some people that believe they were as tall as the Himalaya mountains. I find that hard to believe. I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, that's, that's something that just makes me, uh, it's the most incredible to me that they could be that tall, but they were a lot taller than they are now. Um, some peaks in the St. Francis mountains are what's called linear mountains, like Tom Sock, the tallest mountain in the Ozarks. Others are kind of conical, like Pilot Knob. I'm gonna show you both of these and show you the difference. Um, there's also deep gorges, uh, which have been cut by the streams. And that's where you have places like Johnson's shut-ins that I showed you last week with that blue rhyolite uh, granite. And uh, again, the tallest mountain in the Ozarks is Tom's Hawk at 1,775 feet above sea level. That's not very tall, folks. Uh, remember, um, the uh, Denver Broncos Stadium sitting in the middle of Denver is a mile high, 5,000 plus feet. Uh, and that's a pretty short area. Uh, some of those mountains in the, in the uh, Rockies are 14,000 feet tall. So when we talk about Tom Salk Mountain being the tallest mountain, it's a real disappointment. I will never forget the first time I went to Tom Salk Mountain. And I drove up, uh, they have a place you say, look out over Tom Salk Mountain. And I looked at, and to say I was underwhelmed would be overwhelming. It just like, hmm, you know, it's just, you just don't get the impression of being at a really big mountain. Uh, this was the place of the earliest permanent settlements in the Ozarks because they found lead deposits here. And lead was a hugely important part of the early industry in the Ozarks. And we'll talk about that when we get into the settlement of the Ozarks. This is Tom Sock Mountain. And I'm sure some of you are sitting there right now looking at it and you're doing the same thing I did when I first saw them. Hmm. Not much of a mountain. <laughs> it just, you know, it's just not, it doesn't look like a mountain. It looks like a hill. But that's the tallest place in the Missouri Ozarks. There are taller places in the Arkansas area, but this is the tallest place in the Missouri Ozarks. This is Pilot Knob. Now, at least it looks more like a mountain. It's still not a real mountain to me, but at least it looks like a mountain. Uh, you can kind of see how it's more of a conical type shape. So that's the mountains of the St. Francis Mountains, kind of underwhelming, I know. And then there's the Cordaway Hills. And again, I apologize for the pronunciation, but that's just the way we say it in the Ozarks, Cordaway. Uh, the Cordaway Hills are the steepest slopes and the wildest terrain of any part of the Ozarks. If you want to see the wild Ozarks, this is where you want to go. I mean, when you get here, you're going to find trees and chert rock and rivers and springs and streams and you can get lost really fast in the Quarterway Hills. Um, it's a really rugged part of the Ozarks. It's here that the old saying, 
that we have about the Ozarks is really true. Uh, it's not that the hills are so deep or pardon me, so tall, but the valleys are so deep. Uh, think about that for a minute. It's not that the hills are so tall, but the valleys are so deep. Uh, the erosion that took place. That's what really makes the hills uh, look like the way they do. Uh, this is a place that sometimes is known as the Irish wilderness. And I'll talk to you about that later. It's uh, real briefly a group of settlers, Catholic Irish, came out of St. Louis and tried to establish a colony in this area. And it was so rugged, they couldn't do it. Uh, and a lot of them died and the rest of them pretty much left. Uh, this is the place where that current Jack's Fork, North Fork, Limport Rivers, that I talked to you last week about, or two weeks ago about being the National Scenic Riverways is located. Uh, a lot of the springs like Big Spring, Rear Spring, Round Spring are found here. It, it just, if you want to see the Ozarks, this is where you want to go. You will think you're in the Ozarks when you go to the Quarterway Hills. Uh, for decades, this was the center of the thriving timber industry, which is gigantic in the Ozarks in the late 19th, earliest 20th century. It was also the uh, earliest lead mining region. That now has shifted to the west around the Joplin region. Although there is still a lot of lead mining going on in this region, uh, particularly around the little town of Byburnum. It's called the Byburnum tr Trend, which is the name that gives the lead mining region. Um, you don't even want to try to farm in the Cordaway Hills. Uh, all you're going to grow is rocks. I'm telling you, uh, you can maybe raise some some cattle or some hogs or some chickens, but you just you're not going to farm in the Cordaway Hills. It's not going to happen. Yeah, um, this is a, the Irish wilderness. I mean, that's what it looks like, folks. It's just, you know, this is the remote, rugged part of the Ozarks. And then there's the White River Hills. Now, the White River Hills, of course, as I talked to you last week, uh, was the old White River that flowed into the Arkansas River, which flows into the Mississippi. And it drained the whole southern part, the Missouri-Arkansas border region, basically. And, of course, the Ore Corps engineers went in and they dammed up this, and now you've got six lakes along the White River Hills. You've got Beaver Lake, you've got Table Rock, you've got Bull Shoals, you've got Norfolk, and I can't even remember the other two right now. Uh, those are the four biggest, and then there's two smaller ones. But the White River Hills are the old area around the White River. Uh, they're kind of uh, the region between the Springfield Plain and the Boston Mountains. Uh, and again, they're pretty rugged, uh, although, again, this is kind of a built-up region. This is the area where Branson lies. This is the tourist mecca for the Ozarks now. Uh, again, you're going to find a lot of these balds and knobs rather than mountains. You're going to find a lot of cedar glades. Uh, there's some real scenic areas in the White River Hills. Again, it's not uh, surprising that this would become the kind of tourist mecca of the Ozarks. Um, and again, most of this, the old White River has been pretty much dammed up uh, by the Corps engineers and of course, Taney Como, which was a private dam. Um, so there are some of those uh, lakes I talked about, Beaver, Taney Como, Bull Shows, Norfolk, you know, Table Rock. Branson uh, is a huge city. Only has a population of maybe I don't know, six or 7,000 full time, but on any given weekend, it may have 50,000, you know, in the summer. Uh, it's just a gigantic tourist mecca. Uh, it's called the live country music uh, region of, of the United States. Nashville may be uh, the country music capital where all the recordings go on and the Grand Opry lays, but Branson is where if you want to see live music go on, that's where you come. It's also got places like Silver Dollar City, et cetera. Um, Branson and the surrounding area of the White River Hills also has a lot of caves. The third largest cave in the United States is located here. It's called Marvel Cave. Uh, so this is the White River, what you can see of it. This is Lake Taney Como. Uh, this is one of the 
only areas of the White River that still exist that you could almost imagine what the White River would, look, would have looked like. Uh, this is the Hercules Glade Wilderness. And again, you can see this is one of these cedar glades. Uh, they're all over the place. This is a wilderness area that you can uh, go to and visit down around the Branson area. And this is Marvel Cave. <clears throat> I've got a real short little film I want to show you about Marvel Cave. Kind of tells you a little bit about the history and a little bit about it. Thought it might be interesting. If you've not been inside Marvel Cave, and I'll be honest, if you're like me, you probably aren't going to go anymore because you have to walk a lot. And uh, I've been there many times as a young person, but trust me, I'm not going to go again. <laughs> okay. It's uh, too much walking. So here's about a, I think it's about a three minute clip of Marvel Cave. Welcome to Marvel Cave. Walk up and down 700 stairs through winding passages, enormous rooms, and underground waterfalls. Learn about the lawlessness of the bald knobbers and how Marvel Cave helped build a town that still exists today. This is the largest entryway to any cave in all of North America. It's so large that we could actually fit the Statue of Liberty in here with room left over. Legend has it that the Osage Indians discovered the cave while hunting a bear. The bear and a hunter tumbled into the sinkhole, waking thousands of bats, which to the Indians symbolized the devil. They named the cave Devil's Den and put markings on trees around the sinkhole to ward off settlers. This worked until 1869 when miner Henry P. Blow rediscovered the cave. They started the Marble Cave Mining Company because they thought there was marble in the cave. They still have started a mining town right above this sinkhole called Marmoros. And they, that was a very big town at the time the Marble Cave Mining Company was here. Now, when Henry T. Blow and the Marble Cave Mining Company found out there was no marble in the cave, they changed the name from Marble Cave to Marvel Cave. Blow's disappointment was short-lived when they started mining out valuable bat guano, which was used for gunpowder and fertilizer. Once the Marvel Cave Mining Company got their stuff and they moved out, a man by the name of Mr. William Lynch purchased this cave for $10,000. And he was Canadian. He started giving cave tours with his daughters, Miriam and Genevieve Lynch. The Lynches would lower a 200-foot ladder into the sinkhole to get tourists in and out of the cave. Tourists had the option to explore the cave alone with only a candle to light their way. To increase interest in the cave tours, the Lynches placed a grand piano in the cave for opera performances. And Miriam could actually play piano and Genevieve would sing opera. And this brought a lot of people to the cave when they first started giving cave tours. The sisters donated the cave to the First Baptist Church of Branson and College of the Ozarks. The cave is now on a 100-year lease to the Hershon family who eventually built Silver Dollar City to provide greater entertainment for the cave's visitors. For more information on Missouri Caves, go to visitmo.com. Okay, so that's a little bit about Marvel Cave. It's a great place to visit. And, uh, you know, I'll be honest, like I said, at this stage of my life, uh, I'm not going to walk those 700 steps down and then you walk a whole bunch of steps upward. It gets real tight. Uh, there are what's called ride through caves. There are several show caves in the Ozarks. Uh, probably the greatest one is Fantastic Caverns right north of Springfield. And you get in a Jeep and ride through the cave. Much better at our age, I can guarantee you. Uh, by the way, my wife's mother and Genevieve uh, Lynch, the lady that sang the opera in the cave, were very good friends. And I remember as a young man, uh, we took my mother-in-law down to visit her one day, and she had a, an old place right on the grounds of Silver Dollar City in the private parking area, and her house was there. And, you know, from her house, you could get into the city free and she let us in. And uh, I remember visiting for a very nice, nice lady. I didn't know the full history at that time. I wish I would have. It would have been interesting to have talked about it. Okay, the, the Osage Gasconade Hills. This is the area up around the Osage River. Uh, and again, this is the uh, area that was impounded now by Bagnell Dam which forms the largest man-made lake in the, in the United States. This is, I, I hate to say it, it's kind of a party lake. Uh, people from Kansas City and St. Louis have built just humongous homes on the lake. And it's only about 
two hour drive from St. Louis or Kansas City. And a lot of people, uh, weekenders, come to Kansas, come to Lake of the Ozarks. And uh, it's not as much of a tourist mecca or a family <laughs> environment <clears throat> as is Table Rock Lake. Uh, it has more of an image of a, of a party lake. It's sometimes called, pardon me, here, I got to get here. Pardon me, <clears throat> got a little dry there. Sometimes called Dragon Lake. Show you a picture in a minute. It's also the region that I talked to you last week and showed you that brief film about Ha Ha Tonka, where you can find karst geology uh, on this plate. So this is Lake of the Ozarks. You can see why they call it Dragon Lake. Uh, looks like a dragon, <coughs> obviously. Uh, this is Ha Ha Tonka that we talked about last week. Uh, and this is the old castle that burned down in 1942. And then we have the Central Plateau. Uh, this is the, sometimes called the Salem Plateau. It's next to the Springfield Plain. It is the best agricultural land. Uh, and again, you're going to find a lot of karst in this region. Uh, Blue Spring, Mammoth Spring are found here in the southern part. There's a place called Grand Gulf, uh, which lies a little bit north of West Plains, a little town called Koshkanong. Uh, reaches over a thousand feet in length and that 90 feet deep. It's a collapsed cave, actually, <clears throat> but it's like a kind of a, a deep little valley. Um, somebody labeled it the Grand Canyon of the Ozarks. I've been to the Grand Canyon. Trust me, they're not a lot, but it is a pretty good, pretty good sized little valley. Uh, again, there's a lot of agriculture in this. This is Mammoth Springs. It's one of the bigger springs uh, in this area. It's located in the uh, Salem Plateau, Central Plateau. This is uh, <clears throat> coming out of the Grand Gulf. And again, it's, a, it's a, an impressive place, but uh, again, you're gonna be disappointed if you think you're gonna be looking at the little Grand Canyon. This is the Salem farmland. You can see pretty good looking farmland. Again, uh, this is next to the Springfield Plain. It's the best farmland uh, in the Ozarks, without a doubt. And then finally, you've got the Boston Mountains, which again, are not true genuine mountains. They are not volcanic in origin. Uh, they're actually just a plateau which have been dissected uh, by river valleys. And again, that old saying about, it's not that the hills are so tall, it's the valleys are so deep, comes into play here. Now, some of those hills are pretty tall. Uh, if you look west from the Boston Mountains, into Oklahoma, you see what's known as the Cookson Hills. Uh, the mountain range, again, is just a dissected plateau instead of an actual mountain range. They're the youngest feature of the Ozarks. As a result, they're the tallest feature of the Ozarks. They're the youngest and the tallest. It may surprise you the Rocky Mountains are a brand new mountain range because they haven't been around for very long. Uh, the Appalachian and the Ozarks are a lot older. Uh, the highest elevations are found in Newton, Madison, and Searcy counties. One of the mountains down there reaches almost 2,600 feet in height, which is 1,000 feet above the Springfield Plain, which is 700 feet above Tom Sock Mountain. So, uh, again, it's a, it's a pretty rugged area. This is the Boston Mountain. That feature happens to be known as Hawksbill Craig, and it's a huge tourist site in the Boston Mountains, and people walk out there and they take pictures, and yes, people have died on Hawksbill Craig because they don't pay attention to what they're doing and they fall off the thing. It's a pretty dangerous place to be, but as you can see, it's absolutely a gorgeous spot. You know? uh, this is the Cookson Hills looking west into Oklahoma. This is the part of Oklahoma that is considered to be geologically part of the Ozarks. And uh, this was an area that was uh, heavily populated by the Cherokee Indians when they were moved west into the Cooks and Hills area of Eastern Oklahoma. So that's your geographic tour of the Ozarks. Next week, we're gonna, pardon me, two weeks from ne next, two weeks from now, we're gonna start, uh, looking at 
the Native Americans, and we'll talk about the prehistoric Native American cultures. What Indians existed here and what was it like in the Ozarks before the Anglo, the white man got here, the French and the Spanish and then the American. So I appreciate you being with me today. I hope you've learned something. Uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, have a beautiful week. It's I don't know about where you're living, but here it's supposed to be an absolutely gorgeous week for the end of June. And uh, have a beautiful 4th of July. Celebrate our country. Wave those flags. Drink that red soda pop and eat that watermelon. So I'll see you in two weeks. Sorry, Tony, I'm, I'm double duty right now. <laughs> on That's another okay. meeting, but thank you so much. That was wonderful. Okay. Thank you. I hope everybody has a great rest of your day.